Why do we look at the Quran? Allah speaks about uh, the, the messengers, for example, and He says, Those are the ones whom Allah has guided. So follow that particular guidance. We need to follow the messengers. So when the stories of the messengers have come to us and we see that they who were chosen by Allah called out to Allah, whether it was for forgiveness, whether it was for some savior, uh, you know, to be saved from something, whether it was for something they wanted, all of those that have been recorded, they are recorded for a reason. For you and I to go through them, to look at them, to learn from them, to understand the greatness of the Almighty, the helplessness of man, the dependency of man upon the Almighty, and to be able to use the same words if possible, when it comes to our own needs. Why the same words? Well, the reason why the same words should be used or preferred to be used, the same words as have been used by the previous messengers, those supplications have already reached Allah and that wording worked. It worked. So if you were to use the same wording, you would also be calling on that mercy of Allah that has already come down in the past with exact wordings. It's like a passcode. If I told you, if you want to open this bag, the code is 733, for example. If you were to say, okay, let me just try all these other numbers and you tried, you tried, you tried, etc., etc. I know 733 worked. It's a combination. Let me use that number and it will open the bag. So I use these wordings, but we definitely would not have the exact level of sincerity as the prophets. However, we should be working on our sincerity. We should be working on that closeness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we definitely will be able to benefit from that. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us and encouraging us to look into revelation and to be able to look at these words that were used in order to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, in order to uh, call out with the same words. Another very interesting point, Allah speaks about the Quran. And Allah says, You know, this Quran, this Quran definitely guides towards that which is the best. Aqwam, you know, the most upright, the most uh, in terms of value, the best, the straightest. Uh, this is what the Quran leads you to. So even in terms of supplication, the Quranic supplication is of a value of its own. It is definitely very, very high. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who understand uh, this particular beauty of the Quran. I want to go into the beginning of the Quran. Right at the beginning, we have a surah known as Al-Fatiha. That surah Al-Fatiha is the most important surah in the entire Quran. It's called Ummul Quran, the mother of the Quran. It's called As-Sab'a, Al-Mathani, the seven verses that are constantly repeated. And it has many other names. It is the Dua. It is also called As-Salah. Sometimes the term Salah is used not to refer to prayer or supplication, but it is used to refer to the surah, surah Al-Fatiha. So it's important for us to know why. The reason is, it is an instruction of the Almighty to repeat this surah in every unit of prayer. Not just in every prayer, in every unit of prayer. You know, we call it the raka'at, the units. So Fajr has so many units, Dhuhr has so many units, etc., etc. Even if they're voluntary units that you are uh, fulfilling for the sake of the Almighty, you need to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has required you to read a surah. A specific chapter. Everyone needs to know it off by heart, whether you understand it or not. And that is Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening surah. It starts off with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you take a look at this surah, it is actually amazing because it has in it just a supplication, but it's divided into two. And the Almighty explains that to us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in a hadith in Sahih Muslim. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says that Allah Almighty says, that's called hadith Qudsi. So a hadith Qudsi is that hadith where 
uh, the Almighty is speaking to us, but Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us what he has said. And it's not a verse of the Quran, but it's an explanation of the Prophet, peace be upon him, of what Allah has said. So he says, قَسَمْتُ الصَّلَاةَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ عَبْدِي نِصْفَيْنِ I have divided Surah Al-Fatiha between myself and my worshipper into two. Wow. Surah Al-Fatiha divided into two. My brothers, my sisters, when you are reading Surah Al-Fatiha, it's totally between you and Allah. Divided exactly half. So how? Many people might not understand it. So the Hadith explains it. When my worshipper says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, when my worshipper says, all praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds, I say, that means Allah says, my worshipper has praised me. Imagine Allah is so happy. You just praised Allah and now uh, Allah is saying, wow, my worshipper has praised me. Allah is saying, my worshipper has praised me. Whenever you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, or others are saying it, or a billion people are saying it at the same time, Allah responds to all of them at the same time. When they say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, He says, and the angels are witness to this, my worshipper has praised me. Verse number one, you get a response. Verse number two, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Now, who is my Lord? Who is the Lord of the worlds? He is the most beneficent, the most merciful. Ar-Rahman is a special mercy. Ar-Rahman is a, a, a common mercy, right? That Allah has upon all His creatures. And Ar-Rahim is a special mercy that Allah has for those who believe. So the hadith is telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept this mercy. And He is the most merciful. The verse of the Qur'an is so beautiful, it has in it Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim as the, the next verse, the second verse, subhanAllah. As you open the Qur'an, people say, oh, this book has in it uh, so much of, you know, nowadays with this Islamophobia, people think the Qur'an is a book that makes people drift away from kindness. And yet the very second verse, Allah is saying, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. He is the most merciful. He is the most beneficent. And he responds to anyone who says that or who reads that verse that subhanallah, my worshipper, uh, the first one, he, my worshipper has praised me, Hamidani Abdi. My worshipper has declared my majesty, Majadani Abdi. He has declared my greatness. Amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responding to those who are saying Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim by saying, my worshipper, my worshipper has actually declared my greatness. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. My brothers and sisters, when we read Surah Al-Fatiha, let's take it seriously. We move to the third verse. We're talking of supplication, but this is the build up to supplication. When you want to call out to Allah, first seek forgiveness. Make sure that you have sought forgiveness from all that which you've done that was evil, that which you know, that which you, which you don't know. Declare the greatness of Allah. Declare the fact that you are helpless. You are totally and solely dependent upon Allah. And ensure that you are humble. You, when you ask Allah, you, you are humble, softened. You know, don't just ask Allah like, uh, if you want, do it for me. And if you don't want, don't do it for me. That's the reason why when we call out to Allah, we are not allowed to say, Inshallah. We have to call out with conviction. You don't say, uh, uh, oh Allah, forgive me, inshallah. No, oh Allah, forgive me. And you stop there because you don't want it to, to connect it to whether Allah wants to do it or not. You desperately want it. You desperately want it. Ultimately, Allah does what he wants. So uh, the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in Sahih al-Bukhari, he says, when you call out to Allah, don't say inshallah after that. If you were to say inshallah, it's a mistake because it's like someone saying, ah, if you want to give me, give me. If you don't want, I don't really need it. Astaghfirullah. I'm sure those of us who have said inshallah when we say a dua, we don't do it intentionally. Some of us don't even know what it means. Or we haven't thought about what it means. So my brothers and sisters, uh, when we're calling out to Allah, we need to declare the praise of Allah. We seek the forgiveness of Allah. We show our dependence upon Allah. We need to send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa because all the goodness that we have came to us 
through him and Allah chose him. The best of creation, most noble of prophets. So what Allah considered and what Allah decided would be the highest and the greatest, we are also confirming indeed we are not jealous, we are not uh, far off, we are not, you know, we are acknowledging, we are appreciative and indeed he is the highest and the most noble of all prophets, etc, etc. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once that has happened, we call out to Allah. Here, Maliki Yawmiddin, a person is saying, the third verse, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah responded, my worshipper has praised me. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, my worshipper has declared my greatness or majesty. Maliki Yawmiddin, owner of the day of judgment, owner of the day of judgment. So that uh, statement is also a great declaration of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're confirming it. Uh, in fact, when, when, uh, when we say Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Athna alayya abdi. It's actually a little error of mine, but it's fine. Athna alayya abdi. My worshipper has praised me in a different way. The first was praise. The second was also a form of praise. The third is declaring the majesty of Allah. The third is majjadani abdi, where we say owner of the day of judgment. Now you're declaring the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you take a look at this verse, it is so powerful. It is actually something amazing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us because immediately after that we say, You alone we worship, you alone we seek the help of. You alone we worship, you alone we seek the help of. So the three verses were connected to Allah. Then we have the one verse in the middle, that verse in the middle, half of it is for Allah and half of it is for you. Because when you say, you alone we worship, you're declaring that that is your connection with Allah. And you alone we ask for help, it's something you need. So you are actually uh, uh, asking Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds in a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful way. Inshallah, tomorrow we will be going through the next session. Uh, I know today was a very, very interesting session. I would have loved to complete the entire surah, but I don't want to rush it. We have an entire month ahead of us. We will be speaking of supplications and I want to show you how powerful Surah Al-Fatiha is. So inshallah, don't forget to tune in again tomorrow to look for the next session. And by the will of Allah, we will meet again inshallah. Until then, أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته